All right, let's think about whatever we looked at. The side of x is equal to one half, okay? Whenever we saw that. Now, what did we do? We said, like, x is equal to what? Uh, we said, like, pi over 6, and x was equal to, what, 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Now, why did we put the 2 plus, the plus 2 pi n? Yeah, so we don't miss solutions, but think about your graph here of your side function. What is it doing? It's looking like this. And it has a period of 2 pi, right? So where sine of x is equal to 1 half, I could think of this as here's a y value 1, but I want to know whenever it's going to be equal to a y value of 1 half. So where's the sine function equal to 1 half? Right here and right here, right? That's where my sine function gives me 1 half. So why did I add plus 2 pi in here? Because the period was what? 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, and so forth, okay? So let's suppose I'm dealing with a cotangent of x is equal to some number, let's say square root of 3 or whatever, okay? So what would I do whenever I find the value here? Whenever I solve this, I would say x is equal to something, but this time I would add pi in because the period is pi. Think about this for a second, okay? What does your cotangent function look like? Here's pi, right? Doesn't it do something like that? So what happens over here? You have another period of your cotangent function, right? So when is your cotangent function going to hit new values? Every what? Pi. So we're going to add plus pi in with the cotangent and tangent. All right, anyway, let's take a look at this example. Solve cotangent of x minus pi over 2 plus square root 3 is equal to 0 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so I'm going to take this cotangent stuff, and I'm going to subtract square root 3 from both sides. All right, so what do I want to know? I want to know where is my cotangent equal to a negative, first of all. Well, if I think about the unit circle, my cotangent is going to be a negative over in this quadrant, right? Now, <clears throat> let's see. What is this reference angle right here? I need to find that. So where is my cotangent going to be equal to negative square root of 3? Well, if you think about your regular unit circle in the first quadrant, which values have a square root of 3 somewhere in them. Pi over 6 and pi over 3, right? So let's look at cotangent of pi over 3. Let's see what that gives me, okay? Think about pi over 3. Think about your angle of pi over 3. Pi over 3. What point are you at right here? 1 half square root of 3 over 2, right? Cotangent of pi over 3, that's going to be what? Cosine over sine. So 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, right? What happens if I reciprocate and multiply? 1 half times 2 over square root of 3, or I'll get 1 over square root of 3. And if I rationalize that, what do I get? I get square root of 3 over 3. But what am I looking for? I'm looking for where my cotangent is square root of 3, not square root of 3 over 3. So if pi over 3 was not it. How about if I come over here and do some more scratch work? I say, what about at cotangent of pi over 6? Does that give me a square root of 3 value? Think about pi over 6. Which point are you at? Square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half, right? So at pi over 6, if you take cosine over to sine, you get square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Now, this is just scratch work. Keep that in mind. So that's square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. And what does that give you? Square root of 3. So where's my cotangent? Square root of 3. 
the pi over 6. So that must mean that I have a reference angle of pi over 6 here, right? If I have a reference angle pi over 6, what are my ordered pair? Or what is my ordered pair going to be? It's going to be like this one, but the x value is going to be negative, right? All right, so where is my cotangent equal to negative square root of 3? That's at this actual angle, right? Which is pi back off pi over 6. What's pi minus pi over 6? Yeah, 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to take this argument. I'm going to say that's equal to 5 pi over 6. All right, now for the cotangent, instead of adding plus 2 pi in here, I'll add plus pi in since the period's pi. Now let's solve for x. So to solve for x, I'm going to add pi over 2. So x is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus pi over 2 plus pi in. Well, that's x is equal to 5 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 plus pi in. And what does that give me? 8 pi over 6 plus pi in. But 8 pi over 6, I make that look a lot better. I call that what? 4 pi over 3 plus pi in. Now, let's consider my different values of n since I'm only on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. What about when n is equal to 0? What does that give me? Then a 0 of 0 pi, so I'm just left with 4 pi over 3. That's certainly in this interval. How about when n is equal to 1? What do I have? If n is 1, I have plus pi here. What's 4 thirds of a pi plus 3 thirds of a pi? 7 thirds of a pi or 7 pi over 3, right? 7 pi over 3, what is that like? That's like what? Uh, 2 and 1 third pi? Okay. So if I have 2 and a third, isn't that too large to be in this interval? So that one goes away. I don't use it. Now I'll consider the n was 0, n was 1. What about n being negative? So n could be negatives. What about n being a negative 1? If n is a negative 1 right here, I have negative pi. What's 4 thirds of a pi minus a pi? Or minus 3 thirds of a pi? 1 third of a pi or pi over 3. Well, that's certainly in an interval, right? Well, what about when n is negative 2? What do I have? I have 4 pi over 3 minus 2 pi, or I can say 4 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, but what does that give me? Negative 2 pi over 3? So within this negative 2, I have negative 2 pi over 3. But can I use that in that interval? No. So what is my solution set in this interval? It is pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Try doing that problem by yourself, too. It's a little bit tricky, that one. But make sure you get it down.